Welcome to the show. This is episode five of the conversation with Sky Women. We talk about women who have fallen victim to various kinds of scams online, and in some instances have not only lost millions, but they've lost their dignity, they've lost their support system, and some of them have even been isolated by their families. If you may think that you are immune to being scammed online, you may want to listen in to some of their stories. Today, however, we want to meet an advocacy group. So to hear some more, don't go away, we'll be right back. If you've just joined us, welcome back. We're on episode five of the conversation, Online Safety. I'm your host, Brigetti Limbanda. Sky Woman is a nonprofit organization formed by Louise Haynes, who researched various forms of online scams over the last three years. And its key focus is education, empowerment, and online awareness. We've been sharing stories of women who have been scammed, but today we talk to an advocacy group called Advocating For You. Retired Army, Army Colonel Brian Denny and Mrs. Kathy Waters run an online anti-romance scam advocacy site focusing on the issue of romance scams within social media platforms, and that's across all social media platforms. Brian himself is an identity theft, identity theft victim, and Kathy's mother's friend is a scammed survivor. The two of them came together to try and seek justice for victims. Since they started this initiative, Brian and Kathy have met with the Pentagon, the F FBI, the FTC, Facebook, as well as multiple congressional departments. Their website, aims to help bring awareness of the scams as well as deliver up-to-date information on meetings and legislative work within the US and globally. Advocating against romance scammers can be found at advocatingforyou.com. And so our guest today is retired Army Colonel Brian Denny and Mrs. Kathy Waters. And let's welcome them to the show. Hi, this is Brian. Thanks so much for having me. Welcome, Kathy. Welcome to you too. And it seems we don't have sound with Kathy yet, but let's see how it goes. We will hopefully get some sound um, going. Brian, welcome to the show. So you and Kathy got together to start this online advocacy. Tell us your story. How did this get started? So. Uh, this started happening to me. The, I realized my pictures were being used to uh, take advantage of people back in like June of 2016. And uh, I started kind of working on my own to delete the accounts and, uh, and kind of uh, fight back, you know, not really knowing what I was up against. And then uh, I did this for several months and uh, with not a whole lot of uh, you know, headway. Uh, it was pretty desperate and was about ready to give up. Uh, and uh, Kathy reached out to me and said, hey, I want to confirm that you're this guy. Uh, my mother's friend uh, has been corresponding with someone she thinks is you. Uh, she's uh, given away quite a bit of money. And uh, I just want to make sure that uh, you're not talking to my mom's friend. And I sure enough, I wasn't. She was being scammed. And Kathy and I, she offered to help. And I a lot of people have offered to help before, but you know, what does that really mean? Kathy really wanted to help. She had not been scammed herself. Uh, so uh, we kind of teamed up and she brought a much needed level of organization to uh, what we were trying to do together. Right. And those were some of the, of the pictures that we showed on screen mm -hmm. just a moment ago. Um, are those the, the pictures that were used to, to steal your identity? 
Sure, about, uh, you know, I think we're up to 51 different images that have been used now that you could get almost anywhere just by Googling my name on the, uh, uh, you know, going on the internet. Uh, about 51 different pictures over different time periods uh, that are the ones that they look for. Right. Now, you have, how have you, um, have you been successful so far? Because you've, you've met with various um <laughs> You, you've met with, with, with representatives of Facebook, you've met with the FBI, you've met with the Pentagon. How has that gone so far? So I guess it would kind of uh, determine on how you articulate success. Uh, so we've been very successful in terms of meeting with those agencies. And uh, really, if you look at this, it's really kind of a three-part attack that uh, we kind of started off with. One was to talk about it in shows like this and, and to let people know that this is happening. It's a real thing. Internet crime, uh, romance scams, it does happen. And really just kind of educate people to on what to look out for. Uh, that's one. Two is to work with Facebook and legal, uh, you know, our, our elected representatives to try to change uh, the legislation, change the regulations regarding social media, uh, regarding social media. So uh, social media companies are more responsible uh, for what get posted on their site. Uh, and the third piece of this would be able to actually prosecute people uh, that do this around the world. For me, largely in, in places like Nigeria. Uh, in Ghana to be able to take action, legal action against those folks. So uh, it's still a work in progress, uh, but uh, you know we have we have made progress. Certainly, we've done more uh, working together than we would have uh, if we'd have just said, "Okay, this is really not worth it. We should just write it off." I like to say you, you don't know the victories that you have. You don't know um, uh, how many people have not been tricked into doing something like this simply because you've been on a podcast or or they've read an article going, OK, this is a real thing. I should talk about it with someone. So it's hard to measure the successes, but I do feel like, uh, you know, I'm not prepared to do nothing. Um, they're using my images to hurt and take advantage of people. So I'm not prepared to sit back and kind of let that just happen. So I just want to clarify, and Kathy, I hope that you can hear us now. I just want to clarify, is this a uniquely Facebook problem or do we see this happening across all social media networks in your experience? Okay, Kathy, we're not getting any sound from you, unfortunately. Um, I, I hope we can get that we, we can get that right. So, Brian, can you run with that? What's been your experience? Uh, sure, Kathy's trained me pretty well. No, it's not just Facebook. <laughs> um, although Facebook is the largest of if you if you lump all the other social media companies combined, if you take the top three, they don't even come close to Facebook. And so often, as I've told them, this is not an attack on Facebook. They have a very Facebook has a very good set of community standards. We would just like to help them live up to those standards. And if they look at it and they read what you know they say, we're not going to let people have multiple profiles. We're not going to uh, let the network be used to take advantage or, or for malicious activity. All those things happen. And so we kind of just point out to them, hey, this is happening. These are people that are doing it. And what is your response to that? What do you want to what are you going to do about it? Um, and so we're, we're not attacking Facebook. Quite frankly, uh, I, I run a, a couple of different things. Uh, Army associations. I've got you know, World War Two veterans up on the site on Facebook. You know how hard it is to get World War Two vets up on anything with social media. I'm not prepared to kind of start over. They, they are a tool that I use. But it, and, and they are they are easier to communicate with in terms of reporting a a scam or something like that. But Google Hangouts, uh, you know, any number of other dating sites that I'm on. I mean, that that's too much. I'm not prepared to do that. I can't invest my time and energy into fixing all those things. But if I can get Facebook, then the leader in this kind of uh, social media uh, platform, if I could get them to change, then the others I think would follow suit. Right. I tend to agree with that. Kathy, yay, we've got you back. Yay! I turned <laughs> off the Bluetooth. So. <laughs> Kathy, do you want to jump in there on why we feel it's important that if we can get Facebook to take responsibility? My take on this matter has been that Facebook owns the infrastructure 
on which the scamming is taking place. And so I feel strongly that they cannot abscond themselves from responsibility or try and pass the buck onto its users and say, well, we're not responsible for what you do. In my opinion, you can tell me if, if you think I'm right or wrong. In my opinion, they're enabling people on a platform that they own to create multiple profiles which people can use to scam other people. So I'm saying they absolutely need to take control and take responsibility for what's happening. Absolutely. Um, the law that's in place right now allows them to get away with that. And um, because they're not responsible for what any third party puts online. And that can be a crime as well. So that's what we're focusing on. Um, we've got, you know, we see money laundering happening. Um, identify, you know, the, the IDs, government IDs being made online. Can the rest of us get away with that when we're not online, when we're doing it in, you know, maybe the comfort of our own home? No, it's a crime. So why aren't these platforms being held responsible? And like Brian said, you know, Facebook, they're the biggest ones out there. You know, everybody's going to follow suit with them. So um, if they could have come forward and maybe worked a little bit more to fix this, it's been over 10 years. And, you know, what, what's, what's done is done. And things keep coming out in the media about their lack of security and safety. And when is it time to make a change? When is it time for us as the people to get involved to stop this? Because right now it's allowed. And I, you know, I honestly don't know if it's a money thing. Um, many people definitely think it is, but um, there's really no other explanation as to why they allow these crimes online and they're not fighting um, to get rid of these type of, of crimes and what's going on on their platforms. Right. So there was recently this uh, article in the New York Times. Uh, it came out just fairly, fairly recently telling the story um, of a family's untimely death. Um, ultimately, which was started by an online scam um, or, or inadvertently it led to someone dying. Tell us a little bit about that. So um, she was a friend of mine. Uh, she confided in me a lot in the different um, scam that happened with her. And um, it was a shock. She wanted to tell her story. She wanted to make everybody aware of the scams that are online, what happens. She's, she even went to talk to uh, scammers online to try and get more info. Um, she tried her very best to get as much information out there that she could. And uh, it was untimely. We do not know what the culprit was um, of how she was murdered. We know that her husband did it, but we don't know what stemmed from that argument. Um, we don't know if it had anything to do with the scams or not. It did create tension in the home. Um, the reporter, uh, Jack, that did the Times article, he made sure that the family was okay with doing the article, and they all were. They were all for it. Um, so I really don't know what stemmed um, from the actual incident. Brian, what's your take on, on, on that story? Well, I think... Uh... You know, it's tragic. I think this is one case that we know about. I think that there, um, you know, I think it would be impossible to think that this thing did not affect this couple's relationship, uh, such as it was to a point, you know, you know, we, we know what the result was. We don't know exactly as Kathy said, what led up to it. But the fact that this was a daily topic in their lives as, as they were uh, dealing with this and doing the interview, it's hard to not draw some conclusions that this had uh you know, that this in, in a way was uh, responsible for it. And I would say that um, this is one incident. Uh, I We've talked to ladies who have been involved in this kind of thing before. And uh, some, you know, once they get over the, you know, I, the, the embarrassment of the whole thing and are willing to talk to Kathy, a lot of times they don't want to talk uh, in public because they don't want their uh, husband, boyfriend, family, you know, you name it to know that this has happened and they've, they've been swindled and given away in some cases their life savings. So, you know, this is one incident where we could see how it played out very tragically. I think there's a lot more to it. I think there's a lot of these things that take place. We just never hear about. Right. Yes. I totally want to agree with that because over the last um, week and a bit, I've been speaking to various women 
um, who've come forward to tell their stories. And the pattern seems to be very, very similar. Um, you know, there's always a situation where the woman feels um, alone. She doesn't quite feel that her husband or her boyfriend or spouse is giving her the attention that she needs. And so she's lonely, she's vulnerable or her spouse or boyfriend has just died or she's just lost her child. And somehow these people seem to find these stories um, online and then they will target that woman because she knows she's in a vulnerable um, situation and they exploit that. Um, and they do that by creating these fake profiles. And the modus operandi from what I've seen is always the same. They seem to create this um, re trust relationship with people over a period of two to three months and once that's established, you know, they, they move that relationship offline onto WhatsApp or, or uh, SMS messaging or whatever it is. And that's when they start this process of asking for money. It's, a, it's one small amount, then it's a bigger amount and a bigger amount. And once you've done that second or the third transaction, now they've got a hold on you. Now they will start threatening you and being demanding and say, well, I've now got all this information on you. If you don't send the money, I will do X, Y, Z. Yeah. No, that's that's absolutely right. It's a vicious cycle. It could start pretty start out with small amounts, iTunes gift cards or whatever, and the next thing, you know, they're asking for money to buy them tickets to come back on leave, uh, and then it's for a down payment on a house that they could both share together. Uh, and they there's uh, you know a, a fair amount. We don't haven't talked about it very much, Kathy and I, but you know I get. I get pictures of, of people that want to be my friends and I go, okay, I don't, I don't know this person. I haven't accepted a, I haven't accepted a friend on Facebook in a, in a, in a while. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I accepted someone, but you know, you, you have people sending you pictures and then it's like, Hey, you get these messages and there are more pictures. And I'm like, this is somebody that has been blackmailed by scammers. Uh, and now they've got, pic they've got pictures of them and they're now using them to attack at me uh, you know, posing as a lady who wants to get to them. It's like, it's, it's just a, a never ending cycle that takes place. And the, uh, the, uh, the, the emotional investment, the abuse, uh, verbal abuse, mental abuse that takes place here. And then the, uh, you know, the, the thievery that takes place, it's, uh, it, it's out there and people need to know about it and need to be worried about it. I know, I was reading one um, account and I think it was on your website of a um, a gentleman in the army whose identity was being stolen and, you know, it caused him to lose his girlfriend, it caused all kinds of issues and he's finding it difficult to have real life relationships with people now because it's totally messed up um, his life. It's very hard to convince someone in real life when they see your profile all over um, the internet having, you know, all kinds of relationships with other people. Yeah, I think um, I've been very lucky. Uh, I've been very lucky that the people that know me know me. And uh, I I can say that this is a bit of a distractor uh, when I, in my current position. When I go in to talk to people, you, typically the first bit is, hey, Brian, I saw you on TV. Or I, read, I saw your thing in the New York Times. Uh, is that is that you? And uh, yeah, that's me. And that's what I'm dealing with. And I it's Again, I, I was I didn't talk about this except for Kathy. I didn't talk about this with anybody for the first year because it's so embarrassing that uh, this is happening to me. Just the fact that my pictures are taken and, and are being used and you don't know what to do about it. Does, I mean, what what can you do? You start to kind of think through what are my options here. But I uh, I had uh, after the New York Times article, a couple of guys, uh, you know, that I'm. I work in the Boy Scouts with said, Hey, I saw that. Is that, is that you? And I'm like, yeah, that's me. And it's just not something you walk in and tell people about and, and, you know, have a conversation about it. It's, it's, it's not, it's not something you're, you know, one of the guys like, Oh, this must be great. You're getting all this attention. I'm like, this is not great. And this is a, a horrible thing. It is uh, you know, it's not how you want to be known. Uh, you want to be known as a person who stands up against bullies and fights back. And that's what we're doing. Uh, but you're not the guy who wants to be known as, yeah, all these women are, uh, have lost a lot of money to people that they thought were you and it's ruined their lives. That's not how you want to be. And, you know, people don't think, too, that um, it's very hard for Brian to post anything online anymore of what he because he does a lot of stuff with reenactments and um, where he'll be going or, you know, what he'll be doing, because we don't know if these victims will find this information and 
hunting him down. I mean, everything's online, addresses, phone numbers, um, everything's so easily available. Uh, it really surprises me that somebody hasn't come knocking on Brian's door yet to find the right answers. He's even gotten calls at his parents' house yeah by victims and we don't and we don't encourage that so (laughs) (laughs) yeah we don't encourage that i live on a base uh but uh yeah my mom and dad uh get calls uh you know on a on a frequent basis hey i'm looking for captain major sergeant colonel whatever uh you know depending on what the scammers told them they're looking for me and they want to know if i'm back from deployment and at first my mom's like i got this call and i go okay mom let's sit down i'll tell you how this is going on and they don't understand how any of it works and uh uh which which absolutely makes them right for people to scam them uh i had to talk with my grandmother about it and she said she she had been called and people had tried to scam her about you know another kind of thing so you know they they get it they just don't see how do people make money again off of your pictures and uh i go so it works like this and uh you know they, they get calls i they, i was home, i was home visiting a few weeks ago and while i was there uh, a very nice lady from uh, from Boston called uh, looking for me to tell me that people are using my images to try to take advantage of folks. And, uh, you know, I'm like, yep, that's just one. I mean, there's email messages every day, messengers, messages on messenger from people you don't know. And, uh, and it always is, I'm either, I'm either, I'm, I want you to know that people are doing this to, I thought you were coming to see me or is this the real Brian Denny? Uh, you know, and you're you're the bearer of bad news uh, a couple times a week to people that didn't know they they were being scammed and are just trying and they're just figuring it out. Uh, they've already written the checks and now they're they're doing the research, which is unfortunate. Brian, what's your advice to people who are being scammed now or who suspect that they're being scammed, um, or, or people in your position where your image is being used? Um, and you know, do you advise? someone to go and talk to their family and what is the best way to approach it? Yeah. So first going in, it's uh, this is really simple and uh, you know, really simple piece of advice, but do not give money to people you don't know. Uh, don't talk to strangers. These are very easy things. I mean, I don't, I don't sound like an isolationist. Uh, I've lived uh, all over the world and uh, I have a lot of friends uh, across, uh, across the Atlantic in Europe. But the bottom line is don't, don't talk to people you don't know. Don't give money to people you don't know by all means. And uh, if you've been scammed, uh, you know, can confront the scammers uh, and say, hey, I, I, you know, I've sent you money. I know this is happening. Uh, you know, you're not going to get anything back, but just you know, block, delete, stop having that conversation with them and, and find a group that like that we have uh, and report that, uh, report that because your reporting. It could help ultimately bring uh, bring some of these folks to justice. So if you know something, if you have been scammed, by all means, uh, let us know. Uh, we'd like that information. Um, and talk about it. Uh, talk about it. Let people know that it happened. I find that talking about things like this is really the best therapy. Uh, and so uh, you should have a conversation with your family and uh, and let them know uh, what's uh, what's going on. So uh, all all good things and all all fairly therapeutic. And and you know, again, if you're a guy like me that that uh, you know whose images are being used, my Facebook profile is almost entirely of publications of the article, publications of, of things like this, advertising, hey, my, I've been uh, involved in this, my pictures are being used. Uh, these are the articles, these are links to the stories to let people who really wanna find out, am I talking to Brian Denny if they, if, they, if they can find my profile on Facebook, they will know, hey, yeah, this guy's very upfront about the fact that his images are being used to, to scam people and just kind of continue to circulate that. And I wanted to say too, if you're in the US um, and you've been scammed to definitely report through the IC3.gov. This website is through the FBI. They take all information. You may not hear anything back from them, um, but that doesn't mean that they don't take that information and um, utilize it to the best that they can. It could be, there could be a, a, a claim out right now as we speak, or in the future they can have, um, they can open something up that um, could really benefit a case. So uh, we definitely encourage them to report to the IC3. And um, for people who are having a harder time, some um, are more emotional than others. Um, 
they're definitely uh, more manipulated. Some are more manipulated, have gone into this for years, talking to the same person, to the same scammer. Um, a lot of them need more help than what a support group online can give. And then they need to look for some type of licensed therapy or counseling. So we definitely um, um, appreciate everybody coming, you know, and talking to us and stuff. But please recognize if you need more help than that to definitely seek out a psychologist or um, a therapist to speak to as well. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a very good point. As you said, starting in, most of the ladies that are involved in this, and there are ladies uh, mostly that have been, you know, been uh, victimized using my images. But you know, they're in an emotional, vulnerable state in their life already. Uh, a loved one has been lost or passed away, or they're lonely, and you know, and they try to remedy this by you know meeting someone and talking to someone. That's a very natural thing, um, and they're ruthless you know, organized criminals out there. And that's exactly what these people are. They are ruthless. They are organized criminals and they're, they are preying on people um, that are, you know, in many cases looking for a friend, looking for a soldier to help overseas, looking for someone to talk to. And, uh, and this is what happens to them. So I would, I think what Kathy said is absolutely right. Uh, find someone to talk to uh, maybe not online, uh, but find someone to talk to that, that can help you uh, help you through this. Kathy helped me through this because I was having a hard time dealing with the fact that my pictures were used. Um, and uh, I was grateful to have somebody to talk to. Kathy, as I point out to people, has never been scammed. She's only, uh, this has only cost her when she flies back and forth to DC when we meet with congressional leadership uh, or elected leadership. And when she meets with Facebook, uh, she is Facebook's best uncompensated employee. She provides them reports, uh, monthlies and quarterlies, uh, to say, hey, this is what we're tracking, uh, and uh, you know, she's not compensated at all. But she is; uh, she's been a great person to talk to for many of the ladies that have been involved in this, and she's been uh, pretty good for me to talk to as well. And it certainly helped organize me as we as we try to do something about all this. Thank you, Kathy. How's the, how has Facebook? How do they? How have they received your interaction with them? And what are they actually doing? You know, are you? Do you feel that you're making progress? Um, so we've been talking to them now for about two years. Um, it started off with, we're going to hire more people. We're going to educate, um, everything that we're, that I think we've all been hoping for. And, um, we've seen very little progress. They have said that they're doing this and they're doing that. And, um, have we seen a lot of difference? Not really. No. Um, a lot of the other anti-scam groups are reporting hundreds and thousands of accounts per day of the fake accounts. And I heard many times that they're not seeing a difference. Uh, it seems to go in spurts. It seems like sometimes they're trying new things with their, uh, with their reporting system. And, and then all of a sudden, none of the accounts are being taken down. So it's very hard to pinpoint. They can't give us much information on their technology. Um, it's very hush hush. Uh, I guess if the word gets out, they were saying that, you know, it's definitely more um, ammunition for the scammers out there to figure out the ways of how Facebook is working on their security. So really, that's where we're at right now. We haven't spoken to them too much since the Times article came out and um, not too sure if the communication is going to be around much longer with them. But um, they also know our route as well, um, which is through legislation. So. Um, we're going to continue sending reports to them and um, hope that they're doing something about it and just put the ball in their hands for right now until we can move further with it. You know, I, f I find it really hard to imagine that they don't or that they, I don't know if this is what they've said or not. I'm just saying that they, I find it hard to imagine that they don't have the technology to verify people on their platform. You know, anything that you sign up for, there's some kind of a verification method to verify the authenticity of who you are. You know, if you sign up for an online course, for example, before they let you into the course, they will verify who you are. It's not rocket science, right. you know. Um, so oh. I find it hard to imagine that, that Facebook could use that as a possible excuse that they can't verify their users. Well, part of their argument to us was during a meeting was if the photo is cropped or if it's shaded, their technology can't recognize that. So that put my mind working. And so I took Brian's pictures, I cropped them, I made them black and white, and I tried to post them on Facebook just to see if they would recognize Brian. And they did. They tagged them like that. 
So um, that was about a year and a half ago that I did that. I presented that to Facebook and we really didn't get a solid answer um, as to why um, we were able to kind of debunk their, their reasoning. And just lately, I found some accounts of Brian's um, of pictures that were photoshopped. And so I thought, well, I'll see if it'll recognize them then. And every picture that I copied, which I think was four or five of them, they all recognized Brian right away. So the facial recognition is there and it is working. So why are these accounts still being allowed online? And it's not just Brian, you know, it's hundreds and thousands of other scam victims out, identity theft victims out there whose photos are used constantly. And, so. and I would say that uh, it, it not only did such a good job at, you know, at recognizing who I was, it also recommended friends for me. And all those friends were from Nigeria. So, uh, which is completely, you can see, I mean, I, I don't have a lot of friends in Nigeria that I know of, but Facebook knows that I have a lot of contacts in Nigeria, but really it's guys in Nigeria that are using my picture that, so now I've become associated with this group of miscreants that, uh, you know, to them, they, they can figure that out easy enough. It was right. I mean, it, yeah. And so it's, I mean, it's right there. And if Kathy could see it and I could see it, then they could certainly see it as well. So. And I would just say that over my military career that, uh, you know, resources follow priorities, right? And so if somebody said something's a priority and they don't allocate resources to it, it really probably wasn't a priority. Since we've had discussions with Facebook, they've launched a couple of things to include uh, a dating site. So I don't know how much they spent to get their dating site up and running, but I would have I would have thought that the money from my position would have been better served going to clean up their network and deleting some of the uh, accounts, thousands upon thousands of fake accounts or accounts used specifically by con art artists and scammers. But uh, then again, that that doesn't necessarily help maintain the numbers that they boast about. So, you know, if they clean themselves up, that doesn't really, you know, it may help their image, but it may not help their uh their uh, stock assessments. So, you know, they've got their own priorities. So Brian, um, you being in the military or having been in the military, what is the military's take on this, that their servicemen's images are being used uh, fraudulently? Does that bug them at all? Is, is Are they, are you in any conversation with them at all? Yeah. So unlike the uh, the lady that was interviewed by Jack in the New York Times, uh, who thought that Facebook was doing a great job uh, in helping prevent this, the folks that we talked to in the Pentagon uh, realized that this is a problem. They also realized that, that there's little that they can do about it. They had a, a soldier designated every day to go on and look for the chief staff, United States Army's image on social media and delete fake accounts. And so Kathy and I went in on uh, a Wednesday and said, hey, by the way, you know that the Chiefs got 12 fake accounts right now. And they're like, it doesn't, I mean, it, it doesn't surprise them. They're trying to knock them down, but Facebook's system is such that it requires someone to report. It doesn't go act, out and actively look for fake profiles. It requires somebody to take action. And even on reports that I, that I see or accounts that I see with my image and I report those, uh, I've got, you know, a 50-50 success rate. They'll delete some and they won't delete others, which is so frustrating. And if the Pentagon, if somebody from the Pentagon is reporting on a fake account, um, you know, Facebook may or may not, uh, you know, take it as a real report or a credible report. They may or not may not do anything. The reality is their algorithms sort through that. A human being doesn't actually look at it and go, hey, this is from someone who works at the Pentagon who represents the chief of staff of the United States Army and they want this this fake account deleted. The algorithms don't see that and no human being at Facebook reads that. So they're not in Facebook's not, you know, inclined to take action. What what they are doing and what they are interested in, like most of the people we've talked to in Congress, is what does Facebook tell you? Um, you know, are they working to help solve the problem? Because um, they're hoping that social media giants like Facebook will take, you know, the initiative and and fix themselves uh, themselves before there, you know, has to be regulation to enforce a level of responsibility. But uh, you know, they uh, they have talks with Facebook. They realize it's a problem. They just wonder, as a military, I mean, what what can the Pentagon do to big to a big business? Uh, you know, they they're uh, somewhat uh, somewhat handicapped by what they can do. 
Kathy, tell us a bit about the petition that you've got um, on your website. Okay, well, the petition is um, to support the amendment of the Section of 230 Communication Decency Act. And um, so, like I had mentioned earlier, um, there this law is in place to protect the social media companies from being sued by third-party posts. So um, this law was built in 1996, which tells me, you know, which is even within a few years, it's outdated. And here we are over 20 years later, and nothing has been changed on it except for last year when they amended it over the human trafficking um, clause. So um, we're trying to amend this. We need as much support as possible. Um, we would appreciate if people would sign it and share it with their friends and family. Definitely read it. We never want anybody to sign anything that they don't agree with. But um, that's what it is. We take that those numbers to every meeting we go to to show just how important and crucial it is for this change and how many people are affected. It's not just the victims, it's the families as well that are affected. Um, sometimes the victims will borrow money from these family members, the families or friends can see from the outside exactly what's going on and how they're being scammed. So it affects a lot more than just the victims itself. So we would really appreciate it if everybody who would like to sign, send it to their friends and families to sign. It would be great for us to show that support in the meetings in November. I think what I'm going to try and do is just um, quickly see if I can share that website um, with people so that they can see what it um, what it looks like. Because um, I know everyone is always, you know, reluctant. They're not. You're not always sure. Do you have the right? Um, website or not? So there we are. That is what that sure. is that is what your website looks like, right? Right. Yes. And I always provide the latest updates. Um, I that latest update right there was uh, information we gave to Facebook, and it's part of our research. We want the victims and uh, anybody who want to support us to know exactly what we're doing, what's going on, why we're doing it, and you know it's so important to show the proof and the numbers out there for a cause like this. So I try and show and post as much as we can. And this is regularly updated. And so when people sign the um, petition, what information do you require from them? Um, it really just requires a signature. It's on change.org. And um, the site will ask for um, like donation that is not from our site that goes to change.org. So do not feel you have to donate um, to that site. You can just sign it and um, and exit out of all the other requests from there. It's kind right. of misleading. So I don't want people to think that they're donating and it's going to our cause. That's not it at all. We don't ask for anything like that. These examples on the screen now are those people that are known scammers. Uh, just scammers that are out there, not not necessarily the you know most known, but just um, you know just to go along with the story so they can kind of see. Okay, okay. So that is the website that you need to go to to get some more up to date information about what is currently happening, and um, and that is also where you can sign the petition. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, there's a link up at the top. Fantastic. Um, so what is it that, you know, in closing, what do you want to say to people out there? Um, what can they do if they want, if they're looking for help? Well, I mean, they can absolutely go to the different groups on support groups online. Like I said, get um, any kind of professional licensed help uh, from a licensed psychologist or therapist. Um, report, report, report. People do, are not aware of how much the reporting can help um, bring some of these cases and get some prosecutions. And um, it's just, it's very important. It's also important for them to see the numbers. The IC3 collects all of the numbers of the people who report the scams over the year and they provide a report every year. And um, those numbers are also crucial so people can see how, uh, how bad all of the cyber scams have become online. So um, that's definitely important. Do you have anything, Brian, that you can think of? No, I, I would just 
reiterate the reporting piece. Uh, let somebody know this happened to you. Don't be you know, embarrassed. Your mental health and getting through this is more important than that. And, uh, you know, share that. And uh, again, maybe you'll have a piece of this that uh, will ultimately help, uh, you know, build a case to put somebody away. So don't, uh, don't be, don't be scared. Uh, this happens to everybody from all walks of life. Uh, and uh, don't hesitate to uh, to reach out to somebody to, to tell your story. Just okay, quickly so before we close, mm -hmm. just quickly before we close, um, there was something I wanted to ask you. I find that, you know, one of the things that possibly prohibit us from prosecuting these, these scammers is the fact each, can, you know, crime is international. It happens across borders. Mm -hmm. And so... My thinking is that a lot of these scammers hide behind the fact that there's no international prosecuting body across all the countries in the world that are on the internet. And so they can hide behind their local laws. So should we not move towards some kind of a body that has got teeth irrespective of where you live when you scam people? So maybe. Um... But, uh, you know, I, I can only say this. So our governments have uh, cooperative agreements with a lot of the different uh, countries that this takes place in, uh, like Nigeria, like, like, like Ghana. And uh, I, feel, I feel confident that if we, if the, our, our government can build a case uh, to say, hey, these men are involved in this kind of activity, uh, you know, and could, could uh, work within a government to government relationship uh, that either they would get extradited by care for prosecution or quite frankly, uh, prosecuted in their home countries, which I fear, you know, I, I believe the sentences would probably be just as bad, if not worse, based on each nation's desire to maintain goodwill and, uh, and keep up uh, uh, professional working relationships. I mean, the, the country, you know, Nigeria does not want this to be a topic of discussion. Uh, I think. I mean, you know, this is uh, this is organized crime that's taking place uh, in their country. I, don't, I can't imagine that they're proud of this thing. Uh, they want to maintain positive relationships with the United States. Uh, they understand how their impression is seen on the world market. I mean, uh, Mark Zuckerberg went to Lagos and, uh, you know, proclaimed uh, that them to be a great and wonderful people and brought Internet to them. And this is how they use that Internet to take advantage and, and take billions of dollars away from taxpaying U.S. citizens. I mean, is that is that really what he wanted? Uh, who knows what he wanted? He wants to sell the Internet. Uh, and uh, it's just what the country of Nigeria wants. Probably not. And so I think in the term in, in, in terms of keeping up respectable relationships, uh, no country uh, wants the United States to have this kind of discussion with them. And I think if we could gather the right information to bring people to trial, that would certainly happen regardless of uh, borders. So I think in closing, I think what we want to let people know is if you are a victim or if your image is being used illegally, um, don't be quiet about it. Talk about right. it. Talk to somebody that you trust. Reach out. Um, they can go and register on your website. They can get in touch with Sky Women in South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, but talk to somebody. Don't allow the scammers to... Um, to win don't allow right. them to win don't don't become you know be complicit in what they do by keeping quiet right um, we can only win this battle if you if you speak out and you are loud about what happened yes ma'am exactly right I feel, the, I feel the people who shame other people for being victims of this uh lack the education in this they don't understand the uh the psychological and emotional manipulation that goes on it's not just giving money it's far more than that exactly right <laughs> That is that is such a valid point, you know, because I have shared these broadcasts with people and, you know, I've had people just pack up laughing and they say, oh, my goodness, how could she be so stupid? People don't realize it goes so much deeper than that. It's very, very deep, you know, beyond just the obvious. And, and it's not a laughing matter. It really is not a laughing matter. No, and they all say no. it will never happen to me. And you can never say that. I deal yeah. with many doctors, attorneys, social workers, um, they've all been victims. It has nothing to do with education. Um, it has everything to do with the point that someone's at and, um, and how these scammers can get to them. Yeah. That's, right. That's a very important point that you raised there. It's across all kinds of barriers 
um, socioeconomic, education, it really does not matter. And I think that you, are, you put yourself at risk if you have the mindset, it'll never happen to me. Oh, great. Absolutely. <coughs> I want to thank you both very much for um, coming online, for sharing what you do. Keep up the great work. And we hope that a lot more people will come forward, share their stories, get in touch with you, and sign the petition. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks thank for having you. us. It was a pleasure. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And I'm going to ask if you've watched this broadcast live, thank you for watching, first of all. But please do share the broadcast. We would appreciate that. Bye, everyone. Bye. All right.